Thank you, Mr. President. As we move toward debate over the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2020, I wanted to remind my colleagues that while we stand prepared to negotiate its various provisions, our military men and women stand at the ready. They stand at the ready every single day. It's a 24-7 business for them for a much more serious task, and that is the defense of this great nation. As we consider this year's NDAA, we must do so with the understanding that our nation is faced with new, sophisticated threats to our way of life and to the world order. Two emerging warfighting domains, cyber and space, are capturing much of the attention of this body and our allies, and I will also add capturing the attention of our enemies, of those that do not wish us well. And it is these two domains, cyber and space, that pose increased threats to our national infrastructure and our way of engaging with both those allies and our adversaries. Debating defense spending means thinking beyond helicopters and submarines or equipment and artillery and viewing this authorization in the larger context of multi and unseen domain warfare. That's why my colleagues and I on the Senate Armed Services Committee have come to the table with the bill that shores up funding for these legacy programs and devotes new funding to address these emerging threats. First and foremost, this bill authorizes a 3.1% pay increase for the members of our armed forces. That is so vitally important for the men and women at Fort Campbell which is located right there on the Tennessee and Kentucky border. That is a post that I've spent much of my legislative career involved with those men and women and with the command team. This is a justified and well-earned race that recognizes their commitment to defending against unfamiliar threats that rise above and beyond the everyday service members' scope of duty. We have found ourselves once more in the midst of great power competition. America will always have rivals on the world stage, and over the past decade, we've seen countries like China and Russia pursue increasingly sophisticated and lethal weapon systems. We have no choice but to recognize this emerging reality and give our military men and women the tools they need to combat developing threats and preserve U.S. preeminence across all warfighting domains. With this funding, we'll prioritize more sophisticated cybersecurity and space-based strategies, artificial intel, and other emerging technologies. We will take steps to protect the integrity of our supply chain so that we can be confident the microelectronics we depend on have not been corrupted by foreign spyware. A good defense is only as strong as its weakest link. And this bill will allow us to shore up our relationship with the defense industrial base and ensure that contractors are not under the undue influence of foreign actors. This is all in addition to readiness projects here at home. Our mark includes full funding for the National Nuclear Security Administration, which is critical, critical to our nuclear modernization program. I think it is worth noting that our friends in the House cut over 70 million from infrastructure and facility operations which goes toward rebuilding crumbling buildings at the NNSA's plants and labs. That is funding that should be restored. Modern and responsive nuclear infrastructure is an essential part 
of credible deterrence, which is a critical concern in great power competition. Funding for these projects must not end up as a casualty of budget negotiations. Now, it is true that this is a massive authorization and that much of the funding we authorize won't manifest itself in visible hardware. But I encourage my friends in this body, don't let this deter you from seeing the big picture. National defense is no longer limited to the tools and infrastructure we can see. It includes an enormous covering that is needed by our nation and our allies in this virtual space. We must focus our defense budget on future threats, not those of the past, in order to not repeat the mistakes of the past. And I believe that this year's NDAA accomplishes just that. I yield the floor.